What's up guys, it's Bromley from Empire Barbell. Today I wanna to talk about the Continental Clean and Press. Now, it's no secret that pressing is one of my favorite events. It was the event I was good at before I actually got strong. But you see a lot of press variations and they don't all tend to go the same way. Some of them will absolutely favor the strongest guy in the room. Some of them rely a little more on technique and strategy. The contest I'm getting ready for has an axle clean and press each rep meaning the bar has to be returned to the ground after every press and taken back up to the shoulder. Now, the thing about an axle is it sucks on the grip, which is where we got creative and came up with a continental clean. It allows you to mix grip, hike the weight up your body, flip your grip and, and pop it up. I don't look at the continental clean as a feat of strength. I don't give it that much respect. It is, it's a parlor trick. It was a creative workaround for an awkward object. So I tend to be, So I tend to get a little bitter when promoters take my favorite event and remove the emphasis away from the actual press. So the thing about a continental clean and press each rep, and this is what appeals to the gamer in me, is that it opens up the possibility to use strategy and planning to your advantage. So where you might have a pressing weakness, you might be able to make that up if you understand how to strategize and edge out your opponent that way. So let's assume for a second that you have a field where everybody can kind of press the same weight. Let's assume you got a 220, 240 axle, something like that, and it's you and a bunch of other guys that could all do it for, let's say, seven or more reps. Well, the most amount of reps anyone's gonna get in a clean and press each rep is about 10. To get 10 reps, you have to be strong enough, your grip has to be good enough to power clean every rep and, and cycle through quickly. That's about as fast as you can go. Most of the weights are too heavy for that, so you see guys having to continental each rep which means it slows you down a little bit. Now, the thing is, if your Continental is a little bit better than the other guy's Continental, you can save more energy, you can edge out a couple seconds, that means you can get a couple reps faster. So you may actually go against a better presser, but because you're a little smarter, you took the Continental clean a little bit more seriously, you can actually move more efficiently and you're gonna get more density. You're gonna get a better performance in the same amount of time as the other guy. So that's what we're up against. The, the contest I'm getting ready for, it's a 300 pound axle. Now for these middle weights, that's, that's not that heavy. At an amateur show, that's heavy. But most of these guys, if it was clean ones, press away, could get 10 or 12 reps, no problem. So what we're looking at is me and a sea of other guys that are gonna be fighting to edge out that clean faster and faster and faster. So if everybody's taking their time, doing a mix grip, pulling it up to the belly, swapping the hand over, popping it up, resetting, those of you that have done that with any amount of weight know one, how much time it takes. When you're up on your belly, you're sitting there and you're trying to switch that hand over, those are seconds and that's costing you time and fatigue. Especially as the weight gets heavier or if you get into those later reps, as you get gas, having that weight crush you while you take the time to throw that hand over, it just wipes you out. So I've come up with a way that still takes into account my subpar grip strength, but allows me to cycle through a little bit faster. And I'm gonna show you that technique right now. Now, to give you a little insight in my training, 300 pounds is the weight, I'm comfortable with the press, I need to drill the clean. So what I'm doing is normally what I do with events, I start off a little lighter, I do a lot of volume, a lot of light, quick, crisp run-throughs, and then as I get closer to the show, I add a little bit of weight and I take some work away. This is very linear, it works very well. So I'm not blowing my wad on any one of these, I'm keeping my reps just right and tight. I'm, I'm doing everything clean as I can, as fast as I can, I'm working on transition, aggression, confidence with the movement that I can do with the lighter weights that I can't quite yet do with the contest weights. And as I get closer, that confidence is gonna improve, my speed's gonna improve. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do right now, double overhand. My grip is just strong enough to deadlift double overhand. Now, the best lightweights in the world, or middleweights, I guess, uh, could probably clean a, uh, clean a 300 pound axle one, maybe two times. They're not gonna waste that energy. Everybody's gonna continental. So it's gonna come down to who has the better setup. So what I'm gonna do, I can deadlift it. I can't clean it, but I can deadlift it. If I'm doing a double overhand high pull, my grip's still gonna gas out relatively quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deadlift it, I'm gonna sink it into my hips, and I'm gonna use my hips to pop it up. So what that does, that saves the time from having to switch my underhand over, but it still takes into account that my grip can't quite support the weight all the way up to my stomach in one pull. So I'm gonna show you how that goes right now. now as far as support for this event, Personal preference, I just like wraps in a grip shirt. Uh, my knee sleeve, sorry, my elbow sleeves, my soft belt, my hard belt. I use those for max effort attempts and I use those 
for a clean once and press away because on those events, I only have to get the weight up to my shoulder once and then I wanna be a human ball of compression. That works to my advantage. On this one, you have to breathe, you have to be mobile, you have to move around and the weight is not so heavy to me that I need all of that extra compression. So, play around with it, don't take my word for it. Everybody's situation is different. It may help you a little more than it helps me. This is just over the years what I found to be true. Also, I forego my Olympic shoes. Personally, I don't love Olympic lifters pressing. That's just me. I haven't trained in them that much. Sometimes I'll use them, sometimes I won't. As a general rule, the more mobile I have to be, the less I rely on it. So that's medleys, you know, pressing outdoors, things like that. <clears throat> I uh, absolutely put this in that category. So what I'm gonna do, I got 250. I'm at about 80 so percent of the contest weight. And today I'm gonna to knock off a bunch of triples. And again, I'm working on speed, being crisp, hitting all my marks. Now, a little rusty, so be gentle. that bad getting my elbows through a little harder I'm pretty tight so I have a hard time cranking my elbows up the way I need to and on that last rep you saw me default to a push press which I'm trying to fix but as I as I breathe a lot as I fatigue just a little bit I find that I can just commit to the press faster it doesn't take as much setup that's me that's why I'm strong uh, as I fatigue I'm really gonna have to rely on that jerk a little bit more, so that's something I'm gonna work on. I got about three sets of this left. And then I'll probably do a clean once and press away, just to get a little more pressing volume in. So uh, you can tell I'm winded. I'm out of shape because I haven't done this move in a long time. And uh, even though I feel like I could have got three or four more, more of those in a minute pretty well, it's just it's gonna be about more efficiency and more speed cleaner technique before I even worry about pushing endurance. So that's my tip on the continental clean for today. Leave your messages and comments in the message box. See you guys next time.